Hello. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to start in piano. When I first started around 1980, I wanted to learn because I wanted to learn how to write songs. And the best way to learn how to write songs on sheet music was to learn piano. That's, that's like saying the best way to eat your food is with utensils. It doesn't mean you have to use utensils when you eat. Just like you don't need to learn sheet music when you play. But I personally think it's better if you do learn something when it comes to sheet music. Now, I don't have the sheet music in front of me, so I'm not going to talk about that now. Instead, I'm going to talk about the scale of notes from middle C to the next octave of C. Here's middle C. And the notes, the regular notes, from that C to the next C goes so there's eight notes in all but if you want to have the notes in between added Then there's more notes, like this. So, for instance, if you want to write a song that goes like this, can do it. If instead you want to write a song with one of those weird in-between notes, you can do this. And that doesn't sound bad at all, but if you're going to do that, your best bet is to first know that the basic line of notes is... Uh, And a basic song like that might go...
words, it's it repeats over again, but if you have the right rhythm and you go da 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 you can make it work. Now, just because you have the other notes, the weird notes in between, it doesn't mean you have to do something like You don't have to do that. You can if you're me, but that's another point entirely. If you want, those other notes can work if you're doing some like You see, I added one slight little note to it, a blues note. So if you see that, you can then do more blues. If you want to add more notes, but you know what to do, like So, a little quirky, but you can do it. In other words, a blues chord has what you would call a seventh, which is weird, um, but like for instance, da 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 da, that that is considered to be a major seven, which means it's a regular note. If you want to do a blues seven, it would be a, um, um, it's, called a seventh chord as opposed to a major chord. It goes So instead of it's and it sounds weird unless you put it together like this. Here is what the song might sound like with just a major chords without the flat seven. And here is what it would sound like with the flat seven. There. Now, since this is about songwriting, and it's not just about learning stuff, I'm going to say you can also do other stuff with the other notes, like this. Well, that was a mistake, but I liked it. Let's try it again. That's also a mistake, but let's leave it in because we're, we're doing this on the fly. Now that I don't like as much. That's because I'm overemphasizing the flats. If I go like this, now that was a mistake, but it sounded good. But let's try it again.
Now that's more like it. That emphasizes certain notes in the flats, which give it a tone that sounds good. So with that, you can move from C to E flat because you're going in the direction of the blues flat notes like this. And you can do it without that flat G chord or G7. You can do it with the regular G chord. You see? The difference was just that one note. I used B flat in the G chord in the first example. And then the second example, I used G natural seven. Now, this stuff is stuff that I'm talking about because I'm not like a really full fledged teacher in the ability of being able to teach unless I go very, very slowly with each particular person and go through what they need to go through to learn stuff. But if you're like, I don't understand this, And you're thinking, why can't it go like this? Would you believe it could go like that? But not in the realm of conventional music. In conventional music, it's... Now, in my music sphere, it can go like this. Which I think sounds pretty damn hot, but you have to actually know how to get there. You can't just assume that you can go from to this. You can do that if you want, but you kind of have to know why you're doing it. And then after you know why you're doing it, then you can do stuff like this. <laughs> and it doesn't sound like pounding on the piano because I know what I'm doing. And that's because I started like this.
for a few little bum notes here and there, but but you you see what I mean? I knew what I was doing because I knew how to make the progression work on the bass. As opposed to... Which would work if I'm doing it, but it won't work unless you know what you're doing. And the reason why songs by the Beatles are mostly considered great is because they go through a very, very basic, very basic chord progression. I don't have the Beatles music in front of me to give an example, but, well, there's one song that, that's not in the same realm. That song is Yesterday, and, and I used to know it. I don't have the score music in front of me. I don't want to play it now because I don't want to screw it up. That was an accident. I, I pressed my hand on the keyboard, but I, it sounded good. So that's another thing. If you know how to play and you make a mistake, but it sounds good, that can work. I'm going to do... I'm going to play you my version of Midnight Cowboy by John Barry, which it's been a long time since I played it, and I will probably screw it up, but I will continue to go on even if I screw it up because I want to see what I do. Okay, what I did there was I made a mistake, but because I made a mistake, I continued on and I turned the mistake into something that I did. There's a song by the Rolling Stones called Sing This All Together. That's a brilliant written tune they actually play it like they're idiot infants. So I don't recommend you hear them play it. But if you do, more power to you. Anyway, it's in D flat, but the D flat turns in time into a C sharp, which correlates with an E and an A, which in turn correlates to an A flat or a G sharp, back to D flat, which is one of the most brilliant chord progressions I know of. Here's my version of that song.
okay, I made a few mistakes, but the point is it starts out D flat, E flat, F minor, F sharp, F minor, E flat minor, D flat, and then it goes to B, which has the same chords, but disguised differently. So it's like... Which is like... You have to really know what you're doing musically to do it. Because... It goes from a flat kind of chord progression to all of a sudden a major chord progression or a sharp, which here is C, here is C sharp, here is C, here is C flat. C flat is actually B, but yeah. Anyway, all I'm trying to say is, so with these chords, it's like the note might be, which might be like, In other words, as long as you make it sound like you know what you're doing, you might go against the grain as far as musicality. But you're still going to be doing something musical because you're using the sensibility of what it is to do different notes and um so this is kind of a sporadic very first lesson for people who might not get at all what i'm saying but i'll finish by doing a song of my own that i wrote and then I will, exp and as I go through it, I will explain what I did. I wrote this back in 1987. That was E minor with E minor bass, and then D with E minor bass. A minor. A minor bass with G, E minor, E minor bass with D, A minor, A minor with G bass, I mean G chord, E minor, D with E minor bass. Now that's the part that I want you to understand. The beginning goes like this. The beginning is So it's basically it's an E minor. An E minor means it could be like but because I'm using the F sharp in it, this is the G, which is in the E minor chord, and then the F sharp is, which would be in the D chord, but I'm using it in the E bass. So instead of, I'm doing this. Okay? 
So, with that being said, the beginning is like this. That relates to the A minor chord, which is, and then it goes to the G chord in the right hand and still the A minor in the left hand. So it goes. Otherwise, if I did the chords A minor and G with the perspective basses, it would be like this. I'm not saying that that's bad. In fact, it does sound good, but that's not what I wrote. If I wanted to make it sound different, I will first play you what I wrote in these notes, and then I will play you what traditionalists would think I should do. First, here's what I did. traditionalists might want it to be done. isn't whether or not they both sound good. The point is whether or not if you want a certain sound in your music, you do something to make that sound. Which means that if you do something and it sounds not right, then you work at it and you make it sound good. For instance, a song like this. I'm making it up as I go along. Which is a gospel type of song that I don't like. If you want to change it up to make it not quite as gospel, you can go... softens the blow a little bit. Or... That kind of didn't work. Let's try it again. Except for that E minor chord, that didn't work. So I will try it again with E flat. Now that works. So it's just a matter of taste, but like instead of going... which is a little too poppy, it, you can go a little bit more of a flat edge and it gives the song a little bit more of a bluesy feel. 
Right now, I've been talking a lot, and you might not understand everything that I'm saying, but you can listen to it over and over and over and over again if you want in order to try and figure it out, and that would be fine. Anyway, take care, everyone. Bye.